Throughout the warm waters of the Western Atlantic and the Caribbean, one species of fish stands out as the icon of the coral reef environment, the Nassau grouper. Hi, I'm Guy Harvey and I'm here in Little Cayman to join a scientific expedition whose goal it is to unravel the mystery of the grouper moon. Nassau groupers spawning on the west end of the island of Little Cayman. A force of nature, a force of life. What we're seeing out here is one of the great migrations that happens on this planet. We talk about great migrations of monarch blood of butterflies to Central America, great migrations of bison across the Great Plains of North America, great migrations of wildebeest and zebra across Africa. This is a great migration. But this is only a shadow of what this aggregation site used to look like. Imagine thousands more of these fish, and then double that number, and then double that number again. So thick, some divers say you couldn't even see through the fish, but that was then. Today, these are the survivors of overfishing, but for how long? After eight years of protection, the ban on fishing the Nassau Group of Spawning Aggregation Sites, or SPAGs, expires in December 2011. Will the government of the Cayman Islands choose to continue the ban? Understanding what's at stake is a critical goal for the Guy Harvey Ocean Foundation. All right, we're here. The Cayman Islands Department of the Environment and the Reef Environmental Education Foundation, or REEF, are using traditional observations and advanced equipment to put together a picture to help make an informed decision. The evidence that they provide is critical to future management and the conservation of the Nassau Group, and not just for Cayman, but for the entire Caribbean. Here are the basics. It takes a Nassau grouper approximately seven years to reach reproductive maturity. They live more than 30 years and can weigh as much as 55 pounds. The Nassau grouper is a critically important apex predator on the reef. There may be some indication that because of the way Nassau grouper inhibit predatory behavior of other large predators on the reefs, they may enhance recruitment of those reef fishes that maintain the health of the coral by grazing algae. The Nassau group has spawned during the winter months in the Cayman Islands a few days after a full moon. How the fish time it is one of the great mysteries in nature. Diving down out here and seeing not just Nassau grouper but a few other species milling around in, in spawning color phases and you know at some time during the night or during the day those fish are going to be spawning and how they found that spot all together at one time, how they're watching the full moon and the half moon and all the other cues that they have environmentally, nobody knows. It's just evolution has its way of, of making miracles happen. This is the only way Nassau groupers reproduce, but that makes them an easy target for fishermen who fish the so-called grouper holes. Little Cayman really has the last largest known spawning aggregation of this iconic Caribbean fish, the Nassau grouper. It's probably the largest of the few remaining large functioning aggregations left in the Caribbean. The 1980s saw a steep decline in the population of Nassau groupers throughout the Caribbean. Declines occurred because spawning aggregation sites made up 90% of the annual commercial landings. It really was shooting fish in a barrel. When the aggregations were discovered, they were typically fished out. They were fished very hard uh, and, and they were fished to the point where they were no longer worth fishing. Nassau groupers became commercially extinct. This map helps tell the story. Red means it's an extinct aggregation site. One of the remaining spots, shown here in green, is Little Cayman. In 2002 in Little Cayman, so many groupers were removed from an aggregation site, the market became glutted and the fish spoiled in the sun. In 2003, the Cayman Islands government moved to protect Nassau groupers by enacting an eight-year fishing ban on all known aggregation sites throughout the Cayman Islands. Reef instantly dove in to determine how to help. They launched the Grouper Moon Project. 
One of the really, really important aspects of this research is to demonstrate that that not only are they protecting fish while they're at the aggregation, but because those protections are in place, the population itself is responding, and, and everybody cares about that. It doesn't matter if you're a fisherman or if you're a diver, you want to see more big fish on the reef. In 2005, Oregon State University joined forces with Reef and the Cayman Islands Department of the Environment. This year, during the aggregation and final year of the current ban, the teams were out in force once again, determining the effectiveness of the ban and trying to make the best recommendations for the future. It was a massive effort of coordination, cooperation and teamwork. Our combined commitment was substantial and I think uh, the results bear that out, that collaboration is the way to go. As far as the support for all this work is concerned coming through the Cayman Islands Department of Environment, it's been substantial and it's been impressive. Every year they've got a crew out here, they're helping us do our work, we're helping them generate the information that they need. They provide boat support, they obviously fuel for the boats, crew for the boats, they provide logistic support at other times of year. Basically we could not do this work if the Cayman Islands Department of Environment were not involved. One of the critical aspects of the research was the Satellite Drifter project. By setting a tracking device adrift in the ocean each night of the spawning, researchers could track where the eggs were going. What we've been doing with regard to studying these patterns is letting go these what we call surface velocity profile drifters. That's the fancy way of saying basically a ball with an electronics unit in it that has a uh, battery pack, a satellite phone and a GPS unit. And every 10 minutes it sends us a text message and says, here I am. So we can throw this thing into the water and pretend that it's a baby NASA group or a little larval fish and it'll drift passively with the ocean currents and it'll give us an idea of where the eggs might be transported off of the aggregation and where they might end up 40 to 45 days later when we figure that the eggs are done or the larvae are done floating around and are ready to settle out. According to current studies, eggs and resulting offspring frequently return to Little Cayman. The currents aren't linear, like a stream. There are eddies and gyres that form, and we see those eddies and gyres forming off the end of this island on the nights that our NASA groupers spawn, which leads us to believe that the spawning is timed to those eddies that are forming to keep the larvae close to home. Another critical part of the research is measuring the individuals and counting the populations with lasers and video equipment. The counting reveals the population is recovering slowly but the fish need more time to reproduce in meaningful numbers. Catch the fish at the spags, and that will not happen. It, it gives us a different way of getting at this question of how many fish are there down on the aggregation site. And we're doing that year over year, and that ultimately allows us to get at the question of how is the population responding to the marine reserve protections that are in place on the spawning aggregations. It's also important to remember that Nassau groupers are still being fished outside of the spawning season up to a 25% take. We open the season, put a limit on how many groupers can be caught out of the spawn, out of the grouper hole in spawning season, how many can be caught per day, and a limit on the size. What I would say is that if you protect the aggregation time and the aggregation place, is that you'll have a fishery forever as long as you maintain your spawning stock, that is this adult population of Nassau grouper. Certainly you can fish them at other times of year when they're distributed throughout the reefs. It's sort of this concept that should stick very well in the Cayman Islands if you want to use a banking analogy is that you spend your interest, not your principal, right? And that spawning aggregation is our principal. Well protected, it'll produce interest forever. And we can continue to fish other areas around the island within limits of overall harvest rates, but there should be fishing and viewing opportunities of these animals forever if the aggregation site itself is protected. These areas are very special areas and they, they need to be protected. If the areas themselves are protected during any one spawning period then to 25 species that we've seen using the sites will also be protected. One other important result from the research indicates that older, larger Nassau groupers are at the aggregation site for longer and have a better chance of generating a better quality offspring. If you remove a big fish, there's a negative impact on the entire population. The period of time prior to the spawning and during the spawning is critical in protecting these fish. 
between November 1st and March 31st, this represents the core of the species regeneration, the investment. Divers come to the Cayman Islands because of the beauty of the reefs. They are diverse, pristine and wild. Nassau groupers play a key role in each diver's experience as they interact with this iconic fish. The Nassau grouper, to me, is the fish that I fell in love with. The value of a live fish seen by hundreds of divers over a dozen years or more is worth a great deal more than a dead fish on a plate eaten in just a few minutes. But whether a diver or a fisherman, evidence shows if you fish the aggregation, eventually all the groupers will be gone and no one will benefit. If we open it up again, it's simply going to compromise uh, the entire population of Nassau groupers around the Cayman Islands. If the spawning aggregation is protected and fishing outside of the spags is thoughtfully managed, Nassau groupers will continue to be a part of the Cayman Islands heritage, tradition and life for decades to come. My most memorable feeling is that, wow, we've really got this right. The Cayman government, the Marine Conservation Board, the Department of Environment, the scientists, everything is going right. This is amazing. And I had a great feeling of expectation for the future that here you're seeing a story, a turnaround, um, a success story in terms of everybody working together to achieve one thing, which was to, to build back the population of Nassau Grouper particularly in Little Cayman, if not all the Cayman Islands. And having seen that, having been with them, I now know that this can be done. We can do it, we can protect them, and it would be nice to see Cayman back in the forefront with all this kind of stuff and, and take a lead. In other areas, the Caribbean grouper have disappeared and Cayman could be one of those countries that still had a healthy population.